Hi guys, it's Penguin Design here with part two on how to make a game like Pong. So what we're going to do is jump right into Unity and you shall be presented with this screen. Uh, so we're just going to open up the file that we created. Mine was called Pong YouTube. So once that's loaded, you'll notice none of our progress has been saved. I, I can't see my project window. What's happening? So what you're going to do is click on project here uh, and this will open up the project window. Uh, in order to get back our previous scene double click on this main scene that we saved when we finished so what i'm going to do just to organize this a bit is i'm going to create a new folder and call this scenes and just drag in the main component now before i continue i'm going to hit right click create and one more folder so because we're doing physics in this episode i'm going to call it physics so inside this folder what you're going to do is right click hit create now from this large list of options, you're going to click physics material. And I'm going to call this bounce. And its property should be as follows. So dynamic friction, zero. Static friction, zero. Bounciness, one. And that's it. So what this will mean is that no matter how many times the ball bounces, it won't ever slow down. So that's good. And before we continue writing code for our ball, what we're going to do is under our paddle object, we're going to hit add component physics box collider. So if while you're in this scene view, uncheck 2D and you'll get a 3D view of what's happening now. And you'll notice that the box collider is actually 3D. So that's, we're going to actually be using 3D physics here, but don't worry, it won't be as complicated as you think. So now that we've done that, we're also going to add one more component, and this is going to be physics rigid body. So this is Unity's physics system. So we can leave all of these as, it, as they are, but we don't want it to use gravity. But we do want it to be kinematic. Leave all this interpolate and in collision detection as it is. Uh, and just for good measure, it won't really make a difference, but we'll freeze its rotation on all the axes. And we can freeze its position on the Z, although it probably doesn't matter. It doesn't hurt to do it. So now in your ball object, we're going to do the same. So we're going to hit physics, but this time we're going to use a sphere collider. Okay, and so Unity will automatically make that the right size. But what I'm going to do is just make it a tad bigger. So under radius, I can just drag this up. And I like it to just be a little bit bigger. It just makes the collision just feel a little bit more realistic. So 0 0.55 seems like it will work. And so again, we're going to add a physics rigid body component. We're going to uncheck use gravity and check is kinematic. And we can again freeze its rotation and position on the Z axis. So what we're going to do before we continue is if we just let write wrote the code for the physics, what would happen is this when we press when we click, it would go off and it's got nothing to collide with. So what we need to do is create the walls. So the object bounds. So there should be a top wall and a bottom wall for the ball to bounce off. And just while we're beta testing, we're going to have a back wall. We'll delete this once we introduce the enemy AI in the next tutorial. So we're just going to hit game object, 3D object cube. Uh, and I'm going to, this is not permanent. We'll delete it after, but we're going to create a folder called materials. And in this folder, create a material and call this bounds or boundaries, or it really doesn't matter. So under shader, I'm going to check unlit color. So this will mean that it won't be affected by light because as you can tell, we have no lighting. So under the cube we just created, what we're going to do is drag in this bounds material. In our grand view, we'll see exactly what's happened. So I'm going to move its position, and this doesn't have to be perfect. So what I'm going to do is put it in about the middle of the screen, and then double click on it here to zoom in on it. So now I'm going to use the scale tool over here to scale it across on the x-axis. So I'm going to keep doing it until it reaches about the edge of the screen. That's fine. And what I'm going to do is hit Control D and move this down on the y-axis using the green arrow. So I'm going to want it so that I can only see a tiny bit of it. Yep. And on this one, do the same by clicking on it and dragging it up. 
So in our game, we don't want to see those white lines. So what we're going to do is in our bounds material, set its color to be black. So now we can't see these objects in our game view, but we can see them in our scene view, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to make their scale a little bit more uniform. So I'm going to make it 55 on the X and do the same for this object, 55. And don't worry about its position. Uh, it's actually got the right position, even though it's a decimal and it's not that nice. The only thing we need to change is make sure the Z position is zero. Do the same for the other cube, zero. So now I'm going to hit Control Shift N, and this will create an empty game object. And we've got to change its position to be zero on every axis because else it will mess up all the coordinates for the other objects. So I'm going to name this walls. Whoops. And make sure to hit enter. So I'm going to select this cube component and hit control and now select this cube component and drag it under the walls object. So I'm going to call this one top and this one bottom. So that's looking good. And now, just for testing purposes, this isn't going to be in the final game, we'll just put this in while before we have our enemy AI set. So we're going to right click, create a material, and we'll call it enemy. We'll hit shader, unlit color, it's already white, so that's good. Onto this top object, hit control D, and now on the Z axis, rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm going to drag on the enemy material, so now we can see it. So you can drag it in. It doesn't have to have a good position or anything. This is just for beta testing purposes. So that's good. So what will happen is our object will bounce off the walls and bounce off this little temporary object that we have. I'm just going to rename it to enemy uh, example. What we're going to do now is make it so that our ball bounces through scripting. So now what we're going to do is go back into our scripts folder, right click and create a C sharp script. So I'm going to call this ball, uh, but again it's up to personal preference. So by clicking on this it will open in mono develop and what we can do is get rid of these comments like we did last time. So in this tutorial I'm going to be going a little bit faster than last time because we're all a little bit more experienced. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we are going to be using the void start and update, but we're going to replace the void start with void awake. So what this means is void start is called when the game is loaded, or well, this scene, but when the game is loaded basically. But void awake is created when the ball is created. This will be important because what we want in a few tutorials onwards is so that it respawns the ball when the score goes up. So make sure to have a wake there because else when we implement the scoring system it's probably not going to work. So in between our void awake and all the public class stuff we're going to have to define a few variables. So we're going to define a public float. So I'm going to make it public because I want to be able to change this one in Unity. So as you remember, float was a decimal. I'm going to call this ball velocity. In actual fact, it's not the ball's velocity. It's actually the ball's velocity when it was created. But because the ball never loses velocity, it will end up being the same. So I'm going to set this to be about 3,000 for now. Uh, but that's up to personal preference. Again, what you can do is tweak the values. Uh, I'm just giving you some basic values to work with. So now these are going to be private. But in actual fact, we can just leave it. We don't have to write private because if you don't write anything, it automatically becomes private. So this is going to be a rigid body. So remember in Unity, we created those rigid body components on the paddle. So that's Unity's physics system working there. So we need to tell our code what the rigid body component on the ball is. So I'm going to call it RB for short, and I can just leave it at that. Now I'm going to create a Boolean using the term bool, and I'm going to call this isPlay. I'm going to use a lowercase i 
So this will be true when the ball, the game has, this will be true when the ball is moving and when it's not moving, then it will be false. And now we're going to create an int, so a number without a decimal. And I'll call this rand int. Because what we want to happen is when they click for the first time, we want it to go into a random direction. So in our void awake, we're going to uh, tell the computer the values for these variables. So to begin with, rb is equal to the game object that this script is applied to. So in this case, it will be the ball. So we can write game object with lowercase g dot get component. So this is pretty self-explanatory. Get component gets a component of that object. And so the component we're going to be getting is the rigid body component. And now it's got a little bit of odd syntax, but you'll have to get used to it. And that's you're going to have two pointy brackets and then the component type. So this was a rigid body. And then after it, you have to create uh, two open and closing brackets to tell it that it's a function. It's just something you have to do and you're going to have to remember it. So now we're going to set our random integer to be a random int. So we're going to use a function known as random dot range so that means it's a random number between two numbers and I'm going to make it between 1 and 3 and semicolon I, I'm not sure right now I might be between 1 and 2 1 or 3 I'm not really sure we'll have to tweak that if we get any errors so that's good for now now in our void update what we're going to do is write If, like we've been doing before, we're going to create two curly brackets. And inside these parentheses, we're going to use input. So this should all be pretty familiar from the last tutorial. Dot get mouse button this time, so this will be a click, rather than get access, and zero. So zero just means a left click. And we're going to make sure that this is equal to true. So now we want another condition to be true as well, and that's that the ball is not already in play. So what we're going to use is a double ampersand. So this should be shift 7. So now we're going to write uh, check if is play is equal to false. And if you don't give a boolean a value, it automatically becomes false. So right now it's false. And what we're going to do in this is say transform dot parent equals null okay now we're going to write all oops it's in play is equal to true so this means that this will only be called once because once it's called then is play becomes true and it can't be called again so now we're going to uncheck the is kinematic component from the rigid body component of the ball so we're going to do this by a variable rb and we're going to say dot is kinematic and we're going to set this to equal false semicolon to tell the computer that we're done with that now here's the big line that's important we're going to write actually before we do that we're going to create two if statements so i'm going to create that and then create the other if statement and for the condition for this if statement, I'm going to check if rand int is equal to 1. And then I'm going to check in this one if rand int is equal to 2. Okay, so it's going to be basically the same code for both of them. Uh, but for this one, here's the big code. The rigid body component dot add force. So we're going to be adding force. And we're going to have to set all the force properties. So the first is the position. So this is going to be a new vector 3, which means a position in 3D space. Uh, and the properties of this vector 3 on the x and y will be ball, oops, ball velocity, comma, ball velocity. So that will be on the x and y, so this means it will go diagonal into the right. 
I believe, yep. Yeah. And on the z-axis, we want it to be zero. And we can just create a semicolon. So now we're going to copy this line using control C and press control V in here. And we're just gonna make it go in the opposite direction. So we're gonna make it negative ball velocity and negative ball velocity. So I'm sure this is gonna have errors, but we might as well try. So I'm gonna hit file, save. We're gonna go back into Unity. It'll compile down here. And our console is not giving us any errors. And that's the, this physics material called bounce. We didn't apply it to all these objects. So to do this, we're going to go to our paddle object. And under the box collider, we can drag in uh, the bounce material. We can do the same for the ball. And we're going to have to do this for all the walls. So we can shift click and, whoops, shift click them and drag it into the physics material section. So hit save in Unity. And so what we have to do now is apply the script that we just made to the ball. So we're going to go into our ball object, go into the scripts folder and drag in the ball. So now this ball is affecting the ball object. Hit play. As you can see, what we're gonna do is right click in the game view, hit maximize so we get this nice and full screen. So the arrow keys are working before the game started. And if I click, yeah, the ball is bouncing. I think already that our ball velocity is way too fast. So what I'm gonna do is change it to say, make it nice and slow to begin with, 1000. Hit play while check, checking maximize on play. Whoop, that's looking cool. And now we've pretty much got a basic pong game going already. Uh, we don't have scoring and the enemy's not quite working. We need to make it so that when you click it restarts. There's quite a lot of functionality missing, but as you can see in, what was it? In l less than 20 minutes, we, we managed to get the physics, which is the most complex component of a Pong game working. So that is pretty darn exciting. Thank you for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.